So I have put on shapes A, B, and C, cut around the back, and machine sewed them down using an applique stitch on my machine. It kind of looks like a blanket stitch, but it's not quite as heavy as a blanket stitch. So now we're moving on to shape D, the E and F, which are the three little uh, circles in the center of the quilt. Okay, so starting with shape D, the top edge of the circle is a half inch below the horizontal center. So that takes me to there. And one and a quarter inch right of vertical center. So one and a quarter is there, half inch, one and a quarter. So that's where the top edge of D goes. Now keep in mind that my measurements are based on my applique shapes. So I've traced them out, I've prepared the shapes, and um, there will be variations in the sizes because I may not have drawn a perfect circle or you know, I may have made a little blip when I was turning the edge of the fabric. So if your measurements aren't exact to what the ones that are in the pattern, it's not a big deal. It's They're just there as a guideline to give you a place to start from when placing your shapes on the background so that everything goes pretty much where it's supposed to. Okay, now I'm going to place uh, shape E, and I just noticed on the instructions that I've made a typo there, so it should be the left edge of the circle is a quarter inch right of the vertical, and then it says a quarter inch below vertical, but it actually should be a quarter inch below horizontal. So your version may have the typo corrected depending on whether the pattern was printed before or after this video. So um, that one goes there and then shape F, the top edge is a quarter inch above horizontal and three quarter, and this edge here, the left edge is three quarters left of vertical. So three quarters gets me there. So there are your centers. So we will pin those in place, uh, attach them to the background, and I will sew them on. And then I'll come back to show you how to place the next layer of shapes. Okay, so the center three circles are sewn to the background. And as is noted in the pattern, you don't need to cut away behind them. Um, they're too small. Uh, to worry about the bulk and there's nothing that actually gets applicate on top of them so there's no need to worry about reducing the bulk. So I'm just grabbing my group two of my uh, applique shapes and now I'm going to use the guide on page four here there we go this one up here which shows you where to put the next round of applique shapes and you apply them in alphabetical order. So I'm just going to move that to the side. So here is shape G. And when I look at, when I look at this shape or this diagram, you can see that the point of shape G goes against this border. So that's the, the outer border and where it crosses over on shape C. So those are the two things that are gonna give me um, clues on where I should put this piece. So this one gets moved all the way over to there. And then I look underneath and that crosses shape C about there. And then I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna grab my pen and I'm just gonna mark an edge there and an edge there so I know that's where that goes because I want to place all of the shapes on here because the key to placing such big shapes on a big surface is making sure that they're placed properly relative, uh, relative to each other and the only way to do that is to get the first layer down make sure it looks good mark it and then go back and secure them okay so that was shape G 
I mean, I shouldn't have taken that off because I need to know that's shape G. So now I'm with shape H and I can see here that the corner or the point of that goes again to that same border. And uh, this point here is just um, going to be about there in relative in relation to this shape F. So I'm going to place that like that and then just go over to about there. So I'm just going to continue to place around and then I'll be back. Okay, so now I have placed all of the shapes on the back of the quilt and um, they're not pinned down or anything yet. But what I've done is for every shape, I made little marks with my uh, pen. They're fairly faint, you can't really see them that well, but I can see them uh, with the letter and the edges of where that shape is so that when I take it all off I know exactly where to place shapes in relation to each other and I'm pleased with how everything looks so I'm going to start attaching these to the background and as I attach each shape I will cut away the background so that it lies nice and flat and then when these are all attached I'll repeat this process using the step three diagram. And you may or may not need to cut away the background on that one. You can use your judgment to um, see whether you think it's necessary. There's still another round of uh, petals that need to go on, but they're fairly small. So you can decide whether you wanna cut behind those ones or not. But basically, that's just how you do it. And I will show you what mine looks like when it's done. And I'm finished step two and on to step three. Step three done, on to step four. And step four is done. And I just wanted to show you one little last thing before you go. You'll see here there is some, you can see the glue coming through uh, on the side of the petal because you've used liquid basting glue and as it dries it, it uh, comes to the surface. On this piece here I just wanted to show you I've dabbed it off with just a damp warm damp cloth and you can see the glue is all gone so not an issue um, just uh, rub it off after everything's securely in place and you won't even know it was there. All right hope you enjoyed it bye.